This is the review for the chapter 12 and 13 test. In many of these questions, you have your choice on how you want to solve questions, whether you use the quadratic formula, solving by factoring, or completing the square. Sometimes it's easier to do one or the other. Um, on this video, just because I do it one way doesn't mean that that's the only way to solve the problem. It's probably the way that I think is the easiest personally, but if you like using the quadratic formula, you can pretty much use that anytime, but sometimes it is easier to, use, to uh, solve it by factoring, by doing reverse FOIL. So in question number one here, all that you have to do, it says, put your following in simplest radical form. So what times what equals 45? Remember that one of the ways that you could try and figure out the factors of 45 in your y equals is to do the number divided by x and then hit second and table. That will give you your list of factors. Remember that we're looking for one of them that needs to be the perfect square. So nine times five is 45. Cross out the nine, bring out the three. So you have three radical five. Three radical five is not your answer though. Remember that whenever you take a square root, you always have to have a plus or minus. If you forget the plus and minus, your answer is wrong. In the next one, what times what is 275? Again, I would type in 275 divided by X into my Y equals then hit second and table to figure out what times what is 275. Well, 25 times 11 is 275. 25 is a perfect square, cross off the 25, bring out the five. So you have five radical 11. That is not your answer. Remember, it has to be plus or minus. In question number two, you're subtracting the polynomials. What you want to do, is change the minus sign to a plus sign and change all of the signs in the second term. So change all the signs in that uh, trinomial. And then we want to add. When you add, you want to line things up. X squareds underneath X squareds, X is under X's, plain numbers under plain numbers. So we have three X squared minus X squared. Then we have a plus X. Now I'm gonna sort of draw a line here like this just to show that, that you're making columns. There's nothing in this binomial that's an X. So you're gonna have nothing plus five X. And then we have a plus eight on the end. So our answer is two X squared plus five X plus 13. Again, you wanna add things going straight down. In question number three, determine the roots by completing the square. When you complete the square, you want to take half of your B value and square it. Then you want to add it to both sides before you continue with solving. So when I take a look at this one, I want to first get the 48 onto the other side. So plus 48 plus 48. So I have X squared minus eight X equals 48. Now I want to go into my little thought bubble here on the side. In that thought bubble, I'm taking half of the B value. So half of negative eight is negative four, and I want to square it. Again, be very careful. You wanna put it inside parentheses and then square it. So negative four times negative four, which is positive 16. That's the number that I want to add back to both sides. So now I have X squared minus eight X plus 16 equals 64. What I wanna do next is I want to do reverse FOIL. I'm sort of gonna go into another thought bubble over here. I wanna do reverse FOIL for this trinomial. What times what is 16 that adds up to negative eight? Well, it would be X minus four times X minus four. I'm not gonna write X minus four times X minus four though. I'm going to write it like this, X minus four squared equals 64. Now to the opposite of squaring a number is to take the square root of a number. So I wanna take the square root of both sides. So I have X minus four equals plus or minus eight. The square root of 64 is eight. 
Now I want to split it and solve both parts. X minus four equals eight. X minus four equals negative eight. So I'm going to do plus four and plus four. So X equals 12. I'm going to do plus four and plus four. So X equals negative four. So my two answers are 12 and negative four. In question number four, it says specifically solve by factoring. Solving by factoring is when you uh, do reverse FOIL, draw your line down the middle, set both sides equal to zero and solve. So the first thing that I need, I need it set equal to zero, not 40. So I need to do minus 40 and minus 40. So I have X squared plus three X minus 40 equals zero. Now I want to do reverse FOIL. What times what is negative 40? That adds up to positive three. Remember, if you can't think of what times what is 40, in your y equals, do 40 divided by x, and then do second and table to see your factors of 40. Well, what it actually ends up being is positive eight and negative five. Eight times negative five is negative 40. Eight plus five, negative five is positive three. Draw your line down the middle. And now set both sides equal to zero and solve. So minus eight minus eight. So X equals negative eight plus five and plus five. So X equals positive five. In question number five, a rectangular dog pen has a length that is 10 more than its width. The area of the pen is 24 square feet. What are the dimensions of the pen? Remember dimensions mean sides. You're finding both sides. It says a rectangular dog pen. So the first thing that I would do is draw a rectangle. It doesn't say anything about the width. So you can just assume that the width is X. The length is 10 more than. More than means plus. So we have X plus 10. And then it says the area is 24. Well, you multiply the two sides together to find your area. So X times X plus 10 equals 24. Distribute, distribute. X squared plus 10X equals 24. Now, what I would do next is I want to set equal to zero. That way I can either do the quadratic formula or I could um, solve it by factoring. X squared plus 10X. Oops, I forgot my X before. This is a 10X right there x squared plus 10x minus 24 equals zero. Again, you have your choice. Right here, you could either solve by factoring, what times what equals negative 24, that adds up to 10, or you could use the quadratic formula. I happen to feel, this is my opinion, whenever you have an a value, the number that's in front of the x squared, of one, which we do here, I think doing reverse FOIL is a little bit easier. But if you wanna use the quadratic formula, Go right ahead. This one is actually 12 times negative two. So we have X plus 12 and X minus two. Set both sides equal to zero and solve. Minus 12, minus 12. So X equals negative 12 plus two plus two. X equals positive two. Now you have to be very careful here. You're looking for the dimensions or sides of the pen. You can't have a negative length of a side. So you're gonna cross out and you are going to reject the negative. You're rejecting the negative length of the side. You can't measure negative distance. So what we wanna do with that two is we wanna take this two, sub it into here for X and sub it into here for X. So this side is two, then we have two plus 10, which is 12. So our two sides are two and 12. In question number six, determine the solution to the equation, round your answer to the nearest 10th. So in question number six here, we want to solve it. The opposite of squaring something is to take the square root. So to get rid of that parentheses in the squared, I wanna take the square root of both sides. So now I have X minus five equals plus or minus third radical 37. Now, 
you don't you don't need to try and simplify and put in the simplest radical form the 37 because you're trying to turn this into a decimal. So we're just going to type in second x squared and then the number to get it into a decimal. So we don't need to put it into simplest radical form. So I'm actually going to split it right here. X minus five equals radical 37 and X plus X minus five equals negative radical 37. Solve for X plus five plus five plus five plus five. So we end up with X equals radical 37 plus five and X equals negative radical 37 plus five. Now you wanna turn them into decimals. Be very careful. When you, when you type it into your calculator to make this into a decimal, we wanna type in second X squared to get your square root symbol 37, but then you wanna use the arrow pad and tab out of it to do the plus five. Make sure that your plus five isn't underneath the a uh, square root symbol. It needs to be outside. So you need to use the arrow pad and tab out of it. So radical 37 plus five is approximately, when you round to the nearest 10th, 11.1. Negative radical 37 plus five, again, tab out of it and you get negative 1.1. In question number seven, use the quadratic formula. So remember, this is your A value. This is your B value, and this is your C value. So we have negative B, negative of negative six, plus or minus the square root of B squared, again, inside parentheses, very important that you do that, otherwise you'll get the wrong answer on your calculator, negative six squared of minus four times A times C, all over two times A. Negative of negative six really means negative one times negative six, which is positive six, plus or minus. When you type this into the calculator, negative six inside parentheses squared minus four times one times negative 19, you get 112 all over two. Now, 112, notice that it does say simplest radical form. We can simplify 112. 112. I would do in my y equals, I would do 112 divided by x and then second in table, all right, to find the factors of 112. 112 is really 16 times 7, with 16 being a perfect square. Cross off the 16, bring out the 4. So we really have 6 plus or minus 4 radical 7 all over 2. Now you can triangle reduce. What's the biggest number that goes into 6? four and two. Well, it's two. So I want to divide each of those by two. Six divided by two is three plus or minus four divided by two is two radical seven all over one. Now you really don't need the over one because dividing by one is just itself. So I'm going to go over here. So we have three plus two radical seven and three minus two radical seven. That is in simplest radical form. In question number eight, a soccer ball is kicked and its height can be modeled by the equation that's right there. How long will it take for the soccer ball to reach the ground? Reaching the ground is setting it equal to zero. If it's landing on something that was like five feet tall, we'd say equals five, but reaching the ground, the ground equals zero. Round your answer to the nearest hundred. That is two decimal places, all right? Be very careful there. So we're gonna have zero equals negative 16 T squared plus 30 T plus 0 0.5. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. Anytime it asks for decimals, I would definitely use the quadratic formula. It's just easier. So we have negative B, negative 30 plus or minus the square root of B squared, 30 squared, minus four times A times C all over two times A. So we have negative 30 plus or minus, when you type this into the calculator, you get 932. So square root of 932 all over negative 32. 
don't waste your time trying to uh, simplify 932. We are going to make it into a decimal anyway, so don't waste your time simplifying it. We actually want to split it right here. Negative 30 plus radical 932 over negative 32 and negative 30 minus radical 932 over negative 32. You can type these right directly into the calculator. When you type it into the calculator, you want to make sure that you put parentheses in your numerator. So parentheses, negative 30 plus radical 932, close your parentheses, divided by negative 32. When you do that, you get approximately, rounded to the nearest hundredth, negative 0 0.02. Over here, parentheses, negative 30 minus radical 932, close your parentheses, divided by negative 32, you get 1.89. Now you're looking for how long it will take. So we can't have negative time. So we are going to reject the negative time. So our answer is 1.89. In question number nine, use the method of your choice. So what I would personally do, you could do reverse FOIL, um, solve by factoring in letter A if you wanted to, um, but I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm just going to solve for X like I normally would solve an equation. So I'm going to do plus 81 plus 81. So 4X squared equals 81. And then divide by 4, divide by 4. Notice that I'm sort of doing it this way because our answer says round to the nearest 10. All right. Those cancel out. X squared equals 20.25. Then the square root and square root to get the X all by itself. So X equals plus or minus when you round to the nearest 10th, 4.5. You could either write your answer like that or write your answer like this with two separate answers because it is plus or minus. So you could write it either way. In letter B, there is no C term, all right? There's no C, so you want to do the greatest common factor. What's the biggest number that goes into 6 and 42 is 6. You can also take an X out of each one. So that goes outside the parentheses. What's left over, I take away the 6, that's gone. I have an X left over here. 42 divided by 6 is 7. I already have the X there. So that's what it is when we factor out the greatest common factor. Draw your line down the middle. Set both sides equal to 0 and solve. Divide by six, divide by six, you get X equals zero, minus seven, minus seven, X equals negative seven. In letter C, when I take a look at this one, I see that it's not equal to zero, so I'm gonna set it equal to zero. That way I can use the quadratic formula. So three X squared plus 10 minus eight equals zero. I would use the quadratic formula. Could you, if you wanted to, try and do reverse FOIL there? Yes, but again, anytime that that A value is not a one, I would just go straight to the quadratic formula. So negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A, two times three. So type this part into the calculator. 10 squared minus four times three times negative eight, you get 196. So I have negative 10 plus or minus radical 196 over six. 196 is a perfect square. Square root of 196 is just 14. So I have negative 10 plus or minus 14 over six. Split it. Negative 10 plus 14 over six, negative 10 minus. 14 over six. Again, you can type those right into the calculator. If you use parentheses, all right, you could, use, you could type it right into the calculator. Or we can do it separately. Negative 10 plus 14 is four. Four divided by six is 0 0.6666666. The directions say round to the nearest 10. So that would be 0 0.7. Negative 10 minus 14 is negative 24 divided by six is negative four. In question number 10, 
solve algebraically. The first thing that you want to do is set these two things equal to each other. Because you want to know when they're the same, when they're equal to each other. I try and keep my x squared positive. So I'm going to move everything over to the left-hand side. So I'm going to do minus 2x and minus 2x, plus 6 and plus 6. Ooh, I copied the problem. Sorry. Hold on one second. I copied the problem wrong. This was really a minus 2, 2x minus 2 right there. So I want to do plus two and plus two. Sorry about that. These cancel out, these cancel out. Now I have it set equal to zero. That's sort of my goal. So I have X squared minus three X minus four equals zero. You could do the quadratic formula there if you wanted to. However, my X value is one. Therefore, I think it's easier to solve by doing reverse FOIL. What times what is negative four? That adds up to negative three. It is negative four and positive one. Draw your line down the middle, set both sides equal to zero and solve. Four and negative one are not our answers. When it says solve the system, you need to find X and you need to find Y. You need to find X and Y, very important there. Well, how do you find Y? Well, all that you're gonna do is take your X value, sub it into an equation. Take your X value, sub it into an equation. You can use the same equation, so just pick out which one you think is easier and sub it into it. So I have Y equals two X minus two. I think that equation is easier to sub into. So when I go to sub it in, I have two times four minus two. That's eight minus two is six. Over here, I have two times negative one minus two. Two times negative one is negative two minus two is negative four. So my points are X equals four and Y equals six. And then x equals negative one with uh, negative four for our y. When you go to do it graphically, I would suggest typing them into your y equals, do second and table to find your points. You need to make sure that you graph it accurately. When you graph it, when you do second and table, you have your x value and your y value. When you go to graph, remember we always start counting from right here. All right, right where the X and Y axis cross. Your X value is how many go over, your Y value is how many go up or down. So when you go to graph this one, all right, when you go to graph this first one, I'm gonna do this first one in red. Um, you end up with a point here at negative one, zero. You have zero, one. You have negative two, three. You have negative three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Negative three, ten. You have one, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's good enough. Um, so connect it. You want to make sure that these are accurate. Make sure that you have arrows on the ends, and you should always label it. For the second one. All right, we are having y equals x plus five. So one, two, three, four, five. We have the point zero, five, one, six, two, seven, three, eight, four, nine. Going back the other way, we have negative one, four, negative two, three. We have negative three, two. We have negative four, one, et cetera. We're graphing our line. So we want to see where these two lines cross. Well, they cross right here and they cross right here. Those two points, those are our answers. It is negative two, three, and it is one, six. That's what we want to find out, all right? Um, so just make sure that you use second and table, graph it accurately. On your calculator, you can always go to second calc and then find the intersection point by hitting enter three times uh, to find your intersection point on your graph. In question number 11, 
find two positive consecutive even integers. So that means consecutive even and consecutive odd are done the same way. We're counting by twos, um, both with even and odd. If it just said consecutive, it would be X and X plus one. But because it says even, or if it said odd, we're doing X and X plus two. We're multiplying these two things together. X times X plus two equals 840. Distribute, distribute. So X squared plus two X equals 840. We want it set equal to zero so that we can use the quadratic formula or factor. So X squared plus two X minus 840 equals zero. Here's where you have your choice. We could do reverse FOIL here, or we could use the quadratic formula. It doesn't matter. All right. Um, if you go to you do reverse FOIL, remember you could do in your Y equals, you could do 840 divided by X and then do second in table to try and find your factors. Another sort of cheater way to do it, to get a number that is close to your answer is to take the square root of 840. That'll, get, that'll sort of narrow it down a little bit. I think factoring is easiest on this one. It is X plus 30 and X minus 28. Draw your line down the middle, set both sides equal to zero and solve. So be careful. In our answer, it specifically says find two positive ones. Well, that means we're going to reject our negative answer because we want positive. If it didn't say positive, you would sub both of them in and get four answers. But now it says positive, so we're just going to take and sub these in. So X equals 28. 28 plus 2 gives me 30. So my two answers are 28 and 30. Again, if it didn't say positive, we'd have to sub in the negative 30 as well. So be careful there. In question number 12, one integer is three more than twice the other. Twice means two times the other. More than means plus, right? Less than means minus. If it said three less than twice, we would do 2x minus three. Uh, but this one says more than, so we want to do plus the other. So one of them is going to be X and the other one's going to be 2X plus three. We want to multiply those together. The product is 44. So X times 2X plus three equals 44. We want to take and distribute, distribute. So 2X squared plus 3X equals 44. We don't want it equal to 44, we want it equal to zero. So minus 44 and minus 44. Now you have your choice. You could do reverse FOIL. You could do the quadratic formula. It all depends on what you wanna do. I'm gonna do this one by uh, reverse FOIL. So what times what is negative 44, that adds up to three. Now be careful when you do reverse FOIL because there's a two there, Whatever number you put here, all right, you have to multiply by two before you add it to the middle. So this is actually positive 11 and negative four. Two times negative four is negative eight plus 11 gives us our positive three. Draw our line down the middle. And again, you could have used the quadratic formula if you wanted to. Draw our line down the middle and set your things equal to zero and solve. So we get negative 5.5 and we get positive four. You are looking for integers. Integers are non-decimal numbers. So we are going to reject the decimal answer. So we're gonna take our four and sub it in. So we're gonna have four, two times four is eight, plus three is 11. So we get four and 11. Again, be very, very careful here. In question number 13, this starts the multiple choice. 
Uh, simplifying 44, 44 is really four times 11. Cross off the four, bring out the two. So it is two radical 11. That's an easy one. Uh, question number 14, what are the approximate solutions to this? To get rid of the squared, you wanna do the square root. So we have M plus three equals plus or minus radical seven. Um, I'm gonna split it right there. M plus three equals radical seven. M plus three equals negative radical seven. Minus three, minus three, minus three, minus three. So I have M equals radical seven minus three. And I have M equals negative radical seven minus three. Well, when you type them both into the calculator, you're going to get choice C. So second X squared seven tab out of it minus three and then negative radical seven minus three. Type them both into the calculator, figure out what you get, you get choice C. Uh, question number 15. What are the zeros? Zeros just mean answers. Um, so you have your choice here, what you want to do. You could do reverse FOIL. You could do the quadratic formula um, because this is really just zero equals f of x means zero. It all depends on how you want to solve it. Uh, let's do the quadratic formula. Negative of negative b, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. Negative of negative four is positive four. When we type that into the calculator, you get 64 all over, all over four. 64 is just eight. 64 is a perfect square. So we have four plus eight divided by four and four minus eight divided by four. Four plus eight, remember you could type it into the calculator, but if you do, you got, you got to have parentheses. Four plus eight is 12, 12 divided by four is three. Four minus eight is negative four, divided by four is negative one. So we get three and negative one, which is choice C. In question number 16, you're finding how many solutions? All that you want to do is the discriminant, B squared minus four AC. No square root needed, just B squared minus four AC. So if you get if you get an answer of zero, that or sorry, if you get a negative number as your answer to this, all right, if you get a negative answer to that, it's going to be zero solutions. If you get an answer of zero for this, it's going to be one solution. And if you get a positive number, it's going to be two solutions. So B squared minus four AC. B squared, negative six squared minus four times A times C. So just type that right into the calculator. You get an answer of zero when you type that into the calculator. You have 36 minus 36. 36 minus 36 is zero. Zero is Zero is one solution. I know that gets very confusing, right? You could also, if you wanted to, if you forget what's what, just do the quadratic formula to it. Actually see what the answer is. Um, if you get, a neg if you get um, one solution or two solutions um, or no solution because it's an imaginary number. Um, number 17. Oh, by the way, it's never gonna be infinitely many. Uh, number 17. What is equivalent to this? All that this means is X minus 10 times X minus 10. We're just doing FOIL. So firsts, outers, inners, lasts, add together your like terms here for a negative 20 X and you get choice A. Question number 18, last one. All you wanna do is reverse FOIL. What times what is negative three? That adds up to one. There's really a one there, all right? But be careful because whatever you put in the other outer, you got to multiply it by two. Well, this would be a plus three and a minus one. Two times negative one is negative two. Plus three is positive one. That is choice D. So the only thing that we didn't have on this review 
Remember that if you go to do the quadratic formula and you get a negative number, let's say you got a negative 50. Remember that this is a, an imaginary number that is no solution. So just be very, very, very careful. It's a hard topic.